Hi everyone, welcome back to another Cut Above with Chris. Now I'm going for a face shave and a head shave today. First up is the head shave. I normally start with my head shave, which is this video, as you know, because it says head shave at the start of it. Now I'm going to be using like grandpa products again. Now I'm using the scent of cedar. Now you probably can't see that, it just says cedar on here. Now this is the pre-shave oil. I've already applied that to my head. And yeah, I'm just want to see how it is. Now I have to pay a massive sort of tip testament or whatever you want to call it to moil grooming after shave splashes now usually when I end up with quite bad irritation and blood and things like that on the back of my head it's anywhere between four and anywhere between four and ten days it takes for my head to heal the actual skin to heal up and be back to a shaving standard where I can actually shave over it with a DE razor again now it's been two or three days I think since my head shave and the skin on the back of my head looks and feels great I don't feel any bumps there's no sort of but there's nothing it just feels as normal so it's just a huge shout out to Sean Mullen over at Moil Grooming because his product in my opinion is it's clearly better than anything else that I've used and I've used some excellent excellent products as you guys know I've used great balms great aftershave splashes obviously APR things like that but the Moil Grooming for some reason whatever's in there works absolutely superbly well even to say that I've tried all different plates over the last few days, my skin on my neck and my face and stuff still feels great. So it's just a massive shout out to him that he's making an awesome product and it works extremely well. So I'll obviously talk about it a bit more in the face shave as well, but I'm not going to be using it today. I'm going to be using all like grandpa products. So the soap for today is cedar from like grandpa. And if I'm brutally honest, all this smells like to me is like a, it smells like oil, like an oily shaving soap. The actual pre-shave oil itself, it's got a bit of a scent to it, it smells more sort of, I don't know, but it still just smells like oil to me. It almost smells like olive oil. That's the sort of scent I get from this and the oil. An olive oily sort of scent. So it's nothing that blows my mind. It's probably a soap, but it's probably a scent that won't stay in the den, if I'm honest. I'll probably, Piff this or trade this on as a just so someone else can get a use of like grandpa products. They are excellent shaving soaps. Sorry, I'm going to be using the carved shaving brush again. Now, I know I'm using this one to death. Someone asked if the coin in the bottom here was the same logo that they put on the razors, and it's not. It's actually a little custom made coin that Chris came up with for the bottom of the brushes. It is sort of almost like an addition. But what I like about it is on these brushes is you're not putting the wood onto the ground or onto the table or wherever you put it and it stops the wood from getting scratched up, the actual metal takes the impact. So it is a 20mm Super Badger that is starting to feel really, really nice. The first few shaves it was a little bit prickly but now it's feeling really nice. So I'm going to load up quite heavy today or as heavy as I can. Obviously being a head shave I might have to return to the soap because it is such a small knot. But we'll see. So, just loading the brush up now. And I'm sure, I'm not 100% sure because I haven't watched yet, but I'm sure I've seen a video pop up from Suffolk Shaver, Stephen over at the Suffolk Shaver. I know the guy's taken a huge step back from his channel. I think he's pretty much stopped production on his channel, but obviously he's, he's popping in for live shaves every now and then, which is nice. Life does get busy. I do understand where he's coming from and I can see how the channel and stuff like that can take someone's life over. The thing is I have to shave every day for work so me standing in front of this camera with you guys is something I have to do so I might as well do it in front of the camera. My shaves aren't really in essence any quicker if I do it off camera believe it or not. I still take my time, I still enjoy my shaves, I never rush them so I'm still looking at 20 minutes or so for a full shave so why not put it on the camera, top shit, and it, it just it allows me to sort of vent every now and then as well. Get a lot off my chest on this channel, believe it or not. You guys probably don't think I do, you think I'm just talking crap, but it clears the mind and soothes the soul. Right, I'm not sure that's going to be enough, but I'm going to go with that anyway. At the moment, otherwise I'll be here all day. I'm just going to dab a little bit of water on my head. 
I'm going to scoop the excess from the tub. Put it on my head. Yeah, yeah. Good start to the day. Now, I used the pre shave oil last time for the face shave with the lime, and it didn't really affect the lather, which was nice. It's definitely a slick soap. The ingredients list for the soap itself is very minimalistic. You have got stearic acid, coconut oil, water, potassium hydroxide, avocado oil and fragrance. Boom, that is it. Now in terms of fragrance, as far as I'm concerned, don't put a fragrance in this one because it's just, it's almost irrelevant, the fragrance that's in this cedar. Is that what cedar smells like? I don't know if it smells like that. It's not a scent that, that if I picked it up in a shop, I'd go, ooh, I've got to get some of that. Just doesn't cut it for me. But the actual shaving soap itself is an excellent soap base. Now the, the gentleman that makes this commented on my video last time out and I think on Instagram as well and I'm not sure what his name is but he's out of Edmonton in Canada and I have to say even though the scents on this like I say don't really cut the mustard for me the, sh the shaving soap is excellent stuff it lathers really easily it's slick it loads easily it's quite firm so it's going to get you're going to get plenty of use out of your soap it's going to last you a long time I haven't used it on a head shave before, so let's just see how it goes in terms of the residual slickness, which is the property which I prize most above all for a head shave. But as you can see, it is lathering up nice, you can get a nice gloss on there already. Now, I never get a massive lather with this brush in terms of head shaves, it's just not a big enough knot really for getting a super voluminous lather, but it does whip up a really nice little lather. So I'm going to go with it at that. I'm going to leave the lather just slightly thicker than I normally do today, just to compensate the razor, hopefully. And hopefully we'll get the, the shave that I was expecting from the F plate, from the E plate. So the carve razor here, with the Argyle handle, which is the handle that, there's only four of these in the world at the moment, there might be more. I don't know whether he's going to make any more of them. I have got a Gillette Nasset blade in here with its second juice and it's on the E plate which I can't show you because the camera on the front facing camera isn't the best. So I'm just going to get stuck straight in. I'm just going to fill this water up again because it's really cold. It is pretty cold here at the moment so I am using hot water still. We are due some heavy heavy rainfall over the next day or two and massive thunderstorms so I think we're up, due up to 70 millimetres of rain today. So that's a hell of a lot of rain to fall, even for our standards of this winter. Right, well that's filling up, I'm just going to get stuck in straight against the grain. Whoa! Holy shit! I can hear the feedback, but I'm not feeling it cutting the hair. It's just gliding over my skin and taking everything with it. That's incredible. Flash, Bolden. Do you know something? I don't even know your name, Flash. Your actual name. I'll just call you Flash, I suppose. You'd probably prefer that. That's really good. Obviously, it needs a little bit more buffing, and that was just the first sort of few pulls. But that is pretty much BBS on top, and I didn't feel it cut any here. So <laughs> I think the, the E plate's definitely the one for me so far. Now, when I was doing that against the grain on here, I'm actually lifting, not lifting, but I'm not putting the full weight of the razor on my head. So I am, but, because I've obviously got to let the razor blade touch my skin to get BBS, but that there is BBS. With no effort at all. Now the shave will take a little bit longer than say with the head blade. I will try and complete the shave today with the calf. 
As you can see, this race has got quite a. I cut myself there, you bastard. I think I did. I'm trying to show you. But it's got quite a. The angle there is quite sort of steep. Pretty sure I cut myself there. Maybe not. Well. So it's a real light touch. Now, you'll hear a lot of people in the wet shaving community on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, forums, you name it, say no pressure, no pressure. You have to put pressure on a razor on your edge. You have to put some sort of pressure on there, otherwise you ain't gonna cut any hair. You've just got to find the right pressure. Some require quite a lot of pressure, like the double A plate on this razor needs a little bit of pressure. It needs quite a lot actually to get close enough to the skin to pull the hair off so that you get a close smooth shave. This razor, however, it's all about allowing the blade to just touch the skin just and then it just melts the hair off I'm not saying I'm going to get a perfect shave with this today. Like I say, I'm still figuring out these angles with the different plates. They do have a similar angle to the C plate, but it's just ever so slightly different with the larger gaps. And then again, when you go to the milder, the, the smaller gaps, it gets different again. You sort of, on your skin, you sort of at that angle when you're on your face. When you're using the C plate, you're more like that. When you're using the wider plates, and you're more like that when you're using, sorry, the milder plates. Uh, the more aggressive plates, you're more sort of that side on, and you're more like that with the mild plates to try and... It's not like the Rockwell, where you've got the same angle pretty much for every plate, I find. This one you have to adjust a little bit, which obviously brings in a bit more effort a little bit. You need to sort of learn the plates so that you know what plate you're using and how it's best to use it. So if you're watching this flash, which I know you probably are, you, you like me, you like watching the head shave vids.
the E plate is super. Now I've no doubt I've got a bit of blood in the back of my head. The razor is so smooth that even when you get it, you don't know you've got any irritation. Actually, do you know what? I don't think I've actually got any blood today. I definitely have some irritation, I will be honest. There's definitely a bit of irritation on the back. It's not anything major whatsoever. It's nothing like it was on the last shave with the F plate. But I can feel it and it's in a similar sort of area which would suggest that maybe just not a hundred percent healed from the previous shave but the fact that I've managed to get a full head shaving so soon after really is testament to moil grooming and the quality of Sean Mullins product now Just a little bit of cream, a little bit of lather. Just on this side, just got a few little bits of stragglers here. So, like Grandpa soaps are ah, excellent, I really have to say. Like I say, at the moment, there's so many artisans out there. You can't really go wrong. It, it comes boils down to now, scent preference. And I go even as far to say, excuse me, the actual look of the tubs and things like that, the actual what they look like, the labels and the way they're packaged, is it metal tins, plastic tubs, is it recyclable, all that sort of stuff all comes into play now due to the fact that the, the artisan shaving game is, is, is so high at the moment. few seconds or I'll, I'll give it a good stop that 30 seconds to find out how much blood I've got on the back of my head whether I've actually got any blood on the back of my head at all so while I'm doing that I'm just going to unload the brush clean it all out I know I'm doing a face shave I'm going to use the exact same products again for the face shave but I'm trying to break this brush in a little bit I know it's badger people say you can't break a badger in but as far as I'm concerned you can the more you use it, I just find you sort of soften those tips up. Sometimes they'll hook, sometimes they'll split, sometimes they won't do anything. So it's a brush by brush basis. I'll just rinse the soap. In fact, I won't rinse the soap because I don't need to. Right, here we go with the old hand tap. Yeah, so I've got the same, same issue as I had before with my previous one. So, it's not so much the razor this time, I would say it's more that my skin hasn't healed from the re previous head shave. So, I'm gonna reach for the alum again. So I'll just wet my head.
Now it could have been the Allen as well, which has actually helped because it does help. It does sting, but it does help. It helps heal all those little nicks and cuts up. I mean, these are more like weepers from irritated skin more than anything else. But that E plate, definitely for me so far, I'll be interested to try the E, the D, sorry, to see how much different the D plate is to the E for a head shave. But the E plate definitely, so far for me, is the, definitely the head shave plate for me. If you like it, reasonably efficient, but not too aggressive. It's not, it doesn't feel aggressive, that's the problem. And I know the blade gap on there is bigger than one millimetre. I think it's 1.08 mil or 1.12 mil. So I know it's got quite a big blade gap. So it is aggressive, there's no doubt about it. But the way that Chris builds his razors, it doesn't give you that. It gives you the illusion of being a sort of mid-aggressive razor rather than an aggressive, aggressive razor. Now, that's a good thing and a bad thing in a sense. So. So I am going to use the light grandpa balm today. I don't know how it's going to go, but we'll see how it, how it heals the skin up. So I've got light grandpa tea tree balm, and it smells exactly like tea tree. If you smell tea tree oil, it's bang on spot on tea tree oil. So obviously it's tea tree oil that's in it. So I've got no idea how we really use this. I think it says on there, get a small amount on your finger, and then rub it together in your hands. Right, done and dusted. Now that is quite a, quite an oily balm. It is, I don't know, can't really describe it, but it's very hydrophobic. It doesn't water, doesn't mix with it. So I don't know how that's going to go. For me, in my head, that says to me it could clog pores up, but maybe not. So we've got shea butter, arrowroot powder, coconut oil, jojoba seed oil and fragrance. So I would say it wouldn't. The scent is nice, but we'll, we'll leave that on there. I'm gonna shoot off and do my face shave. So, like Grandpa Cedar, really, really nice shaving soap. The scent is, pff, there isn't any scent in my opinion. It's literally none. It could have been unscented, this soap, in my opinion. The pre-shave oil, once again, was the same. It smells like olive oil, it doesn't smell. I mean, if that's what cedar wood smells like, I apologize, but it smells like olive oil to me. And not that that's a bad thing, but it doesn't affect your lather like olive oil does, so. Very, very good. But what's in this actually? I don't think I've read this. Uh, what we got? So we've got jojoba seed oil, castor seed oil, castor oil, grape seed oil, avocado oil, sweet almond oil, and fragrance. So pretty good stuff in there. Grape seed oil, I'm not a big fan of grape seed oil, but it's, it's what it is. We'll give it a bash over the next few shots, well, over the next little while as well, and just see how it turns out. All the blood has stopped. The balm hopefully will do its trick and we'll go from there. So 24 minutes in, I do apologise. I've dragged this one out once again, probably just a little bit too long. The Carve Shaving Maple Brush. Beautiful little coin in the bottom and a 20 mil Super Badger, which is allegedly the best quality and badger knot you can get on the market at the moment. Personally, I don't think this is high, high quality Super Badger. But I could be wrong. I really don't know what I'm looking for half the time in a badger, but it doesn't feel as nice as my silver tips or even my two band finest or my three band blonde from Morrison Fondra. But it's getting better every time I use it. So we'll see how we go. The carve razor, three and a half inch Argyle handle. I've got the E plate on here today and a second use Gillette Nasset. And I have to say, 
In terms of every single DE razor I've used on my head, I've never used one that is so smooth I can't feel it cutting the hair at all. It was like just melting the hair off with that e-plate. It was just super smooth and once I get the angle right and the weight of it right, it will be a absolutely super top-notch head shaver. That was a one-pass head shave pretty much. The soap allowed me to buff for, for ages and could be part of the reason why I'm a little bit irritated on the back of my head but it's a very minor thing for me at the moment. It's a new razor style with a plate and it's just superb so if you're watching Flashboard I'm definitely e plate mate. The D, I'll find out how that feels next head shave but I think the E plate will be the one for you as well mate. That was the smoothest head shave I've ever had in terms of removing the hair, reducing the hair. Absolutely brilliant. And we finished off today with the tea tree oil or tea tree balm, sorry, and I started with the cedarwood pre-shave oil. So you guys stay safe, drive safe, don't drink and drive, and I'll catch you guys in the face shave. Cheers.